Hello, beautiful, precious brethren. So I just want to let you know that Jesus is known as the Prince of Peace. And he's the one that brings peace between God and man. He's the reconciliation between us. The Prince of Peace is also the one that um, gives, us, gives us the spirit that gives us peace um, within ourselves. And um, whenever we obey his commandments, the way that he taught to live by the spirit, his word, then we'll have peace. Now, the world, it, with the world, we're not going to have peace. It's with those maybe that are living the same way we are with under the commandments of Christ. Remember, Jesus said that there's corruption, that the body is corruptible. Um, when we're new creatures created in Christ, we're to put on Christ, put on um, the armor of God, put on, when we get born again, we put on Christ and then we have to renew our mind day by day so that we can have the mind of Christ because he's our Lord in heaven, the head of the body. And if we live the way that he commands us to live, if we obey his commandments by the spirit, then um, we'll have peace. But if we don't obey, what did the apostles say? If You, you know, um, even Jesus said, you know, you can devour each other, you know. Now, the the other nations you know that are worshiping other gods you know there's not real peace there jesus is the only prince of peace he's the only one that can bring peace to the world he's the only that one that can bring love um, peace and joy and kindness and goodness and long-suffering and self-control some people can you know will worship they can practice those things um, but if you're worshiping another god there's a spirit that comes up in the flesh that is not a good spirit. That's the beast rising up in the sea in the water of mankind. Uh, bitterness, a root of bitterness, the scriptures say. Um, wrath, malice, all these other things. So Jesus, that's why we're called the body of Christ. We don't rely on our, on our own flesh. We rely on, on the one that resurrected and defeated death for us, who has victory over death. And these people who claim to be of peace, but they're lying and come in and bring chaos and storms and lies and deceit, you know, which the scriptures say anyone who, you know, say God's word says that Jesus died. If someone says that he doesn't, he, they're, they're a liar because God's word is true. God gave the word and he promised to preserve the word and he gave the word to people who he told to write it in parchment paper and write it in a book. He said, publish it. What is a book? It's published, okay? A book is published, and God's word was published throughout the land, and we have that word. And if someone says, oh, it's not reliable, or oh, man um, wrote it, look in the scriptures. God said, write it down. God said, publish it. That's a book that's published. How can we trust another person's book that's published? You know, how can we trust theirs? They may say it's from God. We say our book is from God. Our book is from God. Because why? Because it teaches us to love our enemies, love one another as, as ourselves. It teaches us righteousness. It teaches us life. If a book teaches you to murder, kill, and slay, you know, um, is that of God? Now, a lot of people go, oh, Christians murder. Um let me just say something about that. The word of God is very clear that the reason that God had those places destroyed like Noah's Ark is because violence was in the land. That's why God destroyed because these evil spirits from below came up into mankind and mankind was violent toward each other. And that was because of the angels that laid with mankind and their seed became giants in the land and those giants in the land became violent okay the violent um, and that's why God destroyed it and it grieved him because of the evil spirits that had manipulated and caused violence and that's the fruit of those that are invading the nations right now all over the world and the fruit of those that may have been um, ruling during the time of the Native Indians. You know, the Native Indians were making a mistake in worshiping the creation, some of them, not all of them. And they worshiped the Creator from the beginning, so some of them got drawn away by um, evil spirits. 
And then there was violence between the natives. So God allowed them to be um, invaded. And then you have those that invaded, you know. Um, they were loving the money and the things of the earth, you know, so much that they had no problem stealing, killing, and destroying the natives and destroying the land and building up Babylon cities. But not just in America. It's in China that happened. Those China used to be a bunch of fishing belt villages. Now it's a bunch of buildings also, a bunch of skyscrapers we call them, and all over the whole world. So you have this spiritual um, invasion of the beast rising up in the sea. And the sea in the Bible is called people. According to the scriptures, the sea that he's talking about is the people. There's a beast, a leviathan, a spirit of iniquity, an evil spirit that's coming up in the earth. And it's influencing and tempting people to... And, and people to rally and be violent and to lie and deceive and do all these things. This is a spiritual battle, beloved. In Revelation chapter 17, it talks about the spiritual city of Babylon, the great city, and the spiritual city of God, which is the holy city. The scriptures say that those that believe in Jesus as the Messiah, that he died for our sins, was buried, that those who believe that he resurrected, they have everlasting life, and that they, their faith is holy. That it is written, our faith is holy to God. So that new, that holy city, New Jerusalem, is who we are. We are new creations created in Christ. Hallelujah. And those that are invading, there's nothing but darkness, beloved. I've been around these, the, these encampments, and it's very dark and very hateful. And many of the people that are siding with them, they're getting those spirits on them, and they're becoming just as vile as them. Now, some of them are coming out. Like I said, some of them were coming out of the encampment as I was speaking the word of God, by the spirit of God, the word is the spirit. Some of them were coming out. We had people come over and start talking to us and we were explaining to them, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He's not about war. He's not about destruction. He's about, well, he is a mighty warrior, but his war, his weapons are not carnal, but mighty and pulling down strongholds, pulling down evil and wicked. And he destroys with the sword, the breath of his mouth. You know, <laughs> when he spoke, one of the soldiers fell back. You know, when he spoke his word, the apostles are known as sons of thunder. Hallelujah. So um, it's God's more powerful than all of their armies, the devil's armies. It says in the scriptures that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and he will fulfill what he said he was going to do. And the father of lights, the father of spirits is going to come, the scriptures say, and destroy the wicked husbandmen that are responsible for this wickedness. He's going to destroy them and put up new husbandmen who will offer up fruit. What is that? People that are going to offer up good fruit, fruit from God and fruit from the dead, people who are going to spread the good news of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, um, that they could have life and reconciliation and peace with God through the, the Lord Jesus. That's what we're to do is be, our feet are supposed to be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 6. So I hope this blesses you and keep praying for um, Ireland and UK and all nations that are being invaded and any um, evil politicians to be brought down and only righteous ones um, be put up in the name of Jesus that our countries would not be overtaken by um, other um, uh, gods, but our, the, our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that's who we worship, that's who we serve. Agape love to you, beloved.